the question that you guys have had about quizzes and testing. So um, I've had a little time to think about it. I think I've got a revised schedule worked out on paper. I'm going to get that um, updated and uploaded back into Canvas. Our goal today will be we're going to finish 6-2 and we'll kind of go over homework questions then from 6-1 and 6-2, although it looks like m many of you have already uploaded homework from 6-1, which is awesome. Um, and I'm anticipating that our first exam is probably going to be April 20th. Now, um, that means we'll finish up two more sections in Chapter 6 this week and next week. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we'll get ready to test. So I think what our format is going to be... <clears throat> I'll, I'll give you a quiz over chapter six, and it's just going to be a take-home quiz, I think, with the exception of one problem, and one problem we're going to do via Zoom proctoring is kind of a trial run <clears throat> before we get ready to test. So I'll probably send you maybe three questions that you'll do on your own, and then during the class meeting, those of you who are here, we're going to um, have you <clears throat> adjust your camera so Ms. Hyde and I can see you. And you'll work the one problem out that I'll put on the screen, mm -hmm. and then you'll message your work to us. Does that make sense? I'll get that set up. As long as we get the hang of that, and then for the ones who maybe have to work and aren't in the meeting, I'm going to contact them separately, and I'll just set up something with them at a different time. Maybe they can all meet in the evening, and I'll do one. Zoom meeting in the meet in the evening, maybe to get theirs in. Um, for the test, I'm thinking we may do kind of uh, the same type of thing, where I'm going to give you part of it as a take home. You're going to work it on your own. Send me your written work, and then I'm going to have a handful of problems that I'm going to do in a Zoom meeting, where we kind of proctor you using your phone or or your uh, webcam if you're using a laptop. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, and because I don't want the whole thing uh, to have to be proctored, but it'll just be a few questions um, just so we've got a little bit of accountability on, I mean, not that I'm saying there's no accountability on the other part because there's a lot of work you have to show, um, but I think that'll just, um, I think that'll make us all feel a little more like we've had Integrity Some, of the grade. Yeah, integrity. integrity thank you, Miss Hyde. That that's a good way to express it. So um, anyway, that'll be the plan. Maybe next Wednesday might be when we do the quiz. We'll we'll see. I'll give you guys enough heads up to know when it's going to be, and we'll practice to make sure that Zoom proctoring works. Okay, we set. All yes, right, let's go <laughs> then to the PowerPoint. <laughs> And where we were this last time is we had talked about um, when we're using the shell method compared to the disk or the washer method that we end up slicing differently. Can somebody tell me if I'm doing the disk or the washer method, when I get ready to make all those tiny little slices, how are my slices oriented to my uh, axis of rotation? Perpendicularly. Very good. Yes. But what's different with the shell method? You're slicing parallel. Parallel. Very okay. good. That is exactly right. And when we slice parallel, the shape changes. It's no longer circular. It's going to be what? Rectangular. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. So if you remember that, we talked last time. I'll just go back here real quickly for a second. So you guys can remember, <laughs> we said that when we're slicing parallel to the axis of rotation, it comes out with these little shells, which if we were to slice through and open up, we know we get these little rectangular shapes, right? Yes. Okay, and we know how to find the area of a rectangle by doing what? 
How many times the width? Yes. Mm -hmm. By doing length times width, <coughs> and then we can turn that into a volume when we multiply it times the height, right? Mm -hmm. Which okay. is your dx or your dy. And so when we're talking about the length of this, since it came from this little circle, it's actually what formula to help us find it. Uh, that would be what part of the circle? Circumference. The circumference. Very good. And circumference is two, uh, two pi, pi r. Pi r. Very good. Two pi r. And then we multiply it times whatever the the function is going to be our height. And then we have our little tiny change in width, which will either be dx or dy, depending on um, what. Uh, axis we were rotating around. So we looked at this figure that was like a bunt cake, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I believe um, this one we did not actually do, did we? I think we did something that was much simpler mm -hmm. as an example. Yes. So why don't we talk about maybe working this one out real quickly. Let's talk about how we could possibly set it up because there's a few things that are a little bit interesting on this. First of all, <coughs> where does it tell us that we're going to rotate? We're going to rotate about what? Uh, X, X equals, equals negative one. Yeah, that is not actually the y-axis. We're scooted over a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to have to be careful um, how we set this thing up in order to be able to come up with the uh, volume using the shell method. So talk to me a little bit about what we have said. Oh, just a second. Okay, so Sam says she's just going to have to watch the recording because she's having trouble with the internet, Sam Carter. So talk to me a little bit about with the shell method, since we're rotating about this, we know this figure is going to end up over here. And you can see in the green where that comes up, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kind of, we said sort of like a dog bowl or a bunt cake, mm -hmm. something like that. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit then about since we're going to be slicing which was it with the shell method? Is it parallel, parallel. or perpendicular? Parallel. parallel. So we're going to need to make sure if we're slicing parallel to the y-axis, <coughs> because the y-axis is parallel to x equals negative 1, then tell me what we would have to use for our function. Are we going to be integrating, since we're slicing parallel, should our function be in the form y equals and x is our independent variable, or should it be x equals and y is our independent variable? X, x equals. equals. What do you guys okay. think? No. If I'm slicing parallel, remember, my little slices are going to tell me I start here oh. and go to here. So what would you say? Um, we're moving out horizontally. I don't know why equals because we're... It, Exactly, because we're going to need to use these X values for those little tiny widths on the slices, right? Mm -hmm. So our volume is going to be 2 pi R times our function height. And then we know it's going to be a DX because we're moving out along the X axis, right? <laughs> so talk to me about what you see here and, and let's see if we can figure out how to get all these pieces on here correctly. Um, is it okay to kick out 2 pi? Yeah. Okay, and I haven't even put my variable of uh, uh, my limits of integration yet. We'll come back and do that in a second. But let's see if we can figure out what our radius needs to be. Um, would that be actually equals negative 1? Okay. Your radius is going to get larger horizontally along the mm -hmm. x so your so the x equation the y axis is not your axis of Just rotation the which is x equals zero x equals negative one is what we're really rotating about so would that be like a horizontal shift mm -hmm. instead of x starting at zero 
your little negative one negative one and but what each of those radius lengths will produce different <coughs> what circumferences mm -hmm. right so what would the radius be it would not be just where you are along the x it'd be the equation <coughs> This, did Sam said 3x minus x squared? Well, no, that's going to be your height. That's going to be your height. Because oh, okay. remember, we said that the function <clears throat> will be your height. And if this had been, well, let me, oh, let me just back up a second. Be four? Right? So suppose, be? listen, listen. Hang on a second. Suppose listen. we had just rotated this about the y axis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we had just rotated this about the y axis, think about as I'm slicing this way, okay, and mm -hmm. I get those, those little slices that I'm going to open up. Remember, this, my circumference was that mm -hmm. equation. Ah, can't get this one to come apart. That goes along this way. What is it that this is? Remember? Think about if I'm slicing through here, then what is what is going to be not the distance or the height this thing is above the x axis, but how far out I am is actually what value? The width. Okay. Oh, that's yeah, your. Be four. Is that going to be your radius though? Won't that be your yes, radius yes. length? Yes, because on the big thing. Yes, radius. yes. <laughs> that's got to be the radius in my circle. So. That is, if we were just rotating about the y, yes. then we would use x yes. as our radius, okay? Mm -hmm. But this one is a little harder. Because this is like a trans transformation, a horizontal shift, uh -huh. what you're looking at. So if it's a horizontal shift to the left, one unit, remember yeah. what happens if you've got a transformation and you go to the left? Is that going to yeah. end up being <clears throat> x minus one, or is that going to end up being x plus x one? one? X plus one. Very good. Because whenever you slice parallel to that vertical line, x equals negative one, your radius length is how far you're from that vertical line. Correct? <laughs> so, okay. So if you're at negative point nine, then your actual radius would be what? Negative point nine plus one, because radius length is always a positive length. Does that make any sense? Negative yes. 0.9 for x plus 1 would be 0.1. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what if you were at x equals 0? That's where your cut is going to be. Then you're at x equals 0, then your radius length would be 1. 1. Mm -hmm. Correct? Because there's one unit from where we're rotating to get to 0. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Just, you're just looking for the radius length. So if it's shifted okay. left or right, you've got to account for that horizontal shifting translation. So we've got our two pi, we've got our radius. What goes in for our height? The equation. Uh, the equation. The equation. So it would be 3x minus nice. x squared, right? Good job. And then I need. What's and our, come on. Little, What's changing? Yeah. Yeah, dx. Yeah. There you go. Now, tell me about the variable of, of integration, not the very, the, I'm sorry, the limits <coughs> of integration. This is going to be integrated from, what's my lower limit? Uh, your lower original limit. graph. What's my lower limit? Zero. Yeah. Yeah, it zero. starts at zero and goes to three. There you go. And see, this is what has adjusted for mm -hmm. the fact that we're not rotating around the y-axis. We've actually scooted over to x equals negative one. Now that's how we'd set that thing up. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so, and go ahead. Question. Our radius is what, like, how far our, I guess, axis of revolution? Uh, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, it would be our distance from there and x. So if we were like two away from our axis of revolution, it'd be x plus two. Uh, yes, because like our, graph, you, our graph is two away. Your graph, yes. What you're really finding, even though we're yes. slicing parallel, our radius is the perpendicular distance. <clears throat> Miss Bedford, 
Yes. Go out, go out from x equals negative one perpendicular and hit that graph somewhere. <laughs> okay. So let's say we went right there, right there, right there. You see, that's perpendicular to your graph. Right. Your graph is mm -hmm. y as a function of x. So the perpendicular distance there would be x. Mm -hmm. The horizontal distance from the x axis up to your graph is your height. And it will be y in terms of x. Mm hmm. So if you're slicing parallel to the Y or an axis that is parallel to the Y, all your variables are going to be in terms of X. Oh, I see. If you're slicing parallel to the X, all your quantities are going to be in terms of Y. Right. And we have that X because the graph is changing as we go. Yes. 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 Wherever you are along the X is going to give you the correct radius length at that slice. And we only have that one because our axis of revolution is, a, is not on the uh, y axis. It, it's not Very at good. x equals zero. It's at x equals negative one. That's it. Sure. Excellent. What do okay. we do as if it spins in on itself? You know what I mean? Like if it, when you like say if it spins on itself, if it had gone around the y axis, <clears throat> is that what you mean? Like if it, was, if it was instead of negative one, it was one. You know what I mean? Well, it, you won't be rotating mm -mm. about an interior point. Mm -mm. Okay. So you won't see one like that. That'd be like a four-dimensional object. Well, you just... <laughs> well, that's how you make a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's... The best thing for you to know on shells is that if you're cutting through the Y, everything is in terms of X. If you're cutting parallel to the X, all your variables are in terms of Y, Miss uh bedford would you agree yes absolutely okay so my question for you is now that we've written this out do you have any concern about solving it from this point or do you think once you're here you're okay once i think we're good yeah, you think you're good it. because integration and the algebra stuff is really easy yes it is exactly you're going to need to use foil <laughs> and simplify that and then you can integrate uh, term by term right mm -hmm. okay Excellent. so let me clear this off i doubt that she i don't know i'm not speaking for miss bedford but i just think this was an example of one so that you could see the type of problem it is yes that, that she is usually exactly. lets she usually lets your area have a boundary of either the y-axis that it's rotating about or the x Especially on shells. Uh, now, <laughs> washers, you may, you know, yes. washers or discs, it might be that we're not using an axis, um, but shells, that this would have been a pretty complex one. I just mm -hmm. kind of wanted to give us uh, the general idea. Mm -hmm. And this again is giving us the visual of when you peel that apart. You guys have done a good job with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's look at. It's kind of like a fruit roll-up thing too when you unravel yeah. those things exactly a it's fruit like a fruit roll up mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so i kind of uh think uh there's emily and jacob i'm so proud y'all are showing your beautiful faces <laughs> i know it does make it better when we get uh -huh. to see y'all um is it is this the one we did last time i think so i think it I is yeah, we, we did that one I think it is too, because if I'm not mistaken, do you guys recall what did we get yeah. for, for what did we get for our, vo our volume on that? 128 over five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, I got a quick question for you before we move on, just to kind of pull some pieces together. We said, I'm going to sketch a little graph up here. Uh, we had this bounded by oops kind of missed on that one the line x equals four right. the curve was y equals uh, square, square root, root of x, x. so one so one had four two figure right <clears throat> and we were rotating it about the y axis very similar to the, the one she just did except it's rotated about the y mm-hmm and this is just the square root function that's kind of blocked off instead of moving on. So we said on that last function, because it was something like y equals 3x minus x squared. The problem was, and Ms. Hyde pointed this out last time, could you even get that in terms of x if you tried? 
Could, could you solve that equation for X and get X isolated? No. No. And we knew because of that function, uh, or, well, I really shouldn't even call it a function because it, it's just a, a, an equation. It, it doesn't, uh, it's, it's not going to... Uh, the have inverse, an inverse. Mm -hmm. is not going to be a function. That's right. So we didn't have the option to do anything other than the shell method. This one, we did <coughs> use the shell method on it. We came up with a value, but here's my question. Could we have used the disk method? Mm -hmm. Let's draw the graph. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we've got the graph right here. And if we rotate it, I'm going to change colors. <coughs> Around the Y? Around uh -huh. the Y. We're going to rotate it around the Y. Miss Bedford, could we do it by the shell method again and then do it by the... Yeah. I mean, not by the shell. Yeah, by the shell method. Do it by, okay, so let's both, just both review. Both methods. We'll Can we do that, guys? Quickly. Mm -hmm. If we're using no. the shell method, we said that was going to be 2 pi, and then we'll have our radius times our height. Now, if we're rotating about the Y... That means there's no plus one or plus two. That's right. That's right. That's okay. Right. So what would be our radius length as we're moving across here? Just X. Just yes. X. And what would be our height? The Our graph, so the square root of X. Square root of X. Very good. So and guys, then, this is like a cookie cutter coming down through the middle, parallel to the Y axis, just cutting out those shells mm -hmm. and then laying them out. And then what are our limits of integration on this from? Uh, uh, zero to four. Zero to four, very good. Okay, so far, mm -hmm. I want you guys to, to do this for me real quickly. You, can you go to the chat button and either give me like a yes, thumbs up, something, so I know that we're good. Scott, we're, we can't see you. Can't, I can't look at all okay. of y'all. So yeah, if I get, all right, so Grant did, I just need to make sure we're all okay with, I recognize where all this came from, putting it into the shell method. Because I can't see all of y'all at once. I'm working on getting a second monitor up so I can hopefully pull that up. What a go, Emily and Jacob, good. Okay. Good job, Sam. Okay. <coughs> all right, so we set. Carson, what does I mean? <gasps> Carson? Silly <goose. laughs> Just checking. Okay, now I got a thumbs up from Zach Petty. Okay. You said, you said something? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was asking, Carson, I was asking you to tell me if um, you were good with the shell method on this one and how I is something. <laughs> <laughs> you are so funny. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, he's good. All right. Thank yeah. you for that moment of levity. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good Lord. I think that's my first chat message uh, joke on Zoom meetings. So Way to go, Carson. That's yeah. Have to be, certainly have to be you. It, it would. Okay. So remind me, because we did this last time. What did we do in order to get to where we could integrate this? Sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> what did we say we had to do so we could integrate this? Uh, uh, we just have to turn it to x2 over 2 and x1 over 2. Okay, very good. So we rewrote yeah. the radical as x to the 1 half. And then, and we, just then we could put that together as... And I'm going to come down here, 0 to 4, kick out the 2 pi. Yeah. And that x to the first times x to the 1 half turned into x to the yeah. 3 yeah. halves. There you dx, go. Dx, dx. So now when that's integrated, you said that turned into two x pi to the 4, uh, 5 over 2, no, two then, 5, x to the 5 over 2. That's right. Multiply that, take x to the 5 halves, multiply it times 2 fifths, and then we were able to put together the 2 pi times 2 fifths, and that gave us 4 fifths pi onto x to the 5 halves, which we then integrated from 0 to 4, and then you guys told me that wound up being... 
four fifths pi on to, if we put in four to the five halves, the square root of four is two, yep. right? And two to the fifth is um, 32. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Minus zero. And that's 32. how we wound up with 128 over five pi. Okay, I went through that quickly because we had done that together mm -hmm. last week, right? Yes. Okay, yes. so now let's take this same problem and I want to see if you remember how would we do this if we were to use the disk method or the shell method? I'm sorry, the disk or the washer method. Would this need to be, is there a hole in it? Does no, it need to be a washer no. or can we try disk? Well, they're disk. I think we can do the disk method, can't we? If we revolve this about <coughs> the y, we're going to slice which way? Horizontally. Yes. Yes, because it'll be perpendicular, perpendicular to the y. the y. So if we're slicing horizontally, what should we do to this equation? Are we going to need to leave it as y equals square root of x? No, we're going to have to do, uh, uh, make it the inverse. Y equals square root of y? So y equals no. the square root of x. We have to do what to solve for x? Got to solve for oh, x. square. Mm -hmm. Square both sides. And that would give us x equals what? Y squared. Uh, y squared. Y squared. So we're going to have Ooh. to integrate in now, terms Ms. of y. Miss Bedford. Yes, ma'am. Our... Am thinking this has to be a washer method. What do you think? Look at this thing. What do you because guys think? As you move along the Y from bottom to top, you're going to have some portion of that that's not going to be colored in. Yeah, the, the little middle area, the very yeah. middle, will be non existent. Yeah. yeah. So, a what washer method. Is saying. <laughs> Now, if it were rotated about about the line x equals four, and you were doing a what this method, then that'd be fine, right? Then it could be four minus y square would be your radius length, I think. But I think I correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm thinking this possibly has to be a washer method. Mm -hmm. What do you guys say? Well, what would the uh, the inner curve be? Just X well, the dis zero. the distance from the y axis would be the the left hand the right hand curve the one farthest to the right would be x equals four four the one that would be close uh, uh, not as far to the right would be x equals our function yeah. y, square. y squared yes right mm -hmm. now what I'm saying is not you're not rotating about the vertical line x equals Four, you're rotating about the y-axis, which is x equals zero. So that's why I think there possibly this possibly needs to be the washer method. So then the farther one would be the x equals four, and then the farther yes. one would be the big radius. Mm -hmm. So you and could then. picture a a gigantic cylinder when you rotate x equals four. Mm -hmm. and then we're going to have to take our function curve and it's going to slice out this hole we don't need in the center. Yes. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. The distance from the y-axis to x equals 4 would be your big outer radius. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. The distance from the y-axis to the curve closer to the y-axis, which is x equals y squared, would be your inner radius. Right. And just to give you a little different uh, perspective on this, let's say that instead of this part being shaded, maybe this was what mm -hmm. was rotated, mm -hmm. okay? Then I think you could do it with disc. Then we would do it with disc because we would start with this outer distance of four and then we'd be subtracting off the curve, right? Mm -hmm. To get that, that distance, but and that would would be the total radius, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But this one has to have the whole cylinder, and then you take off this part that's being <clears throat> formed when you spin that curve around. Does that sort of make sense? Right. Uh, it's just weird because the hole in the center, like that uh -huh. big cylinder in the center, uh -huh. it should have a volume of like x equals 
or not x equals zero, volume is zero. No. Because there's no there's no distance between one like what we're rotating around. There's no distance because at, at zero, uh, the graph is also zero. Yes, but you're moving That's vertically square. now. You're cutting yeah. perpendicular to the Y this time. This is not a shell. Now you're cutting perpendicular to the Y. Miss Redford, can mm -hmm. you go up there and show them that graph? So, and I know my graph is getting very <laughs> messy, yeah. but we said we'd be slicing perpendicular to our axis of rotation. So as I'm slicing through this way, yes. Okay. My distance that I'm moving when I'm up here. It's getting bigger. Yeah. So uh -huh. there's, there's this distance here that's getting cut out. Yes. So that's, that's why it is a washer. Yes. Okay. So let's see if we could figure out then how we're going to fill in using our washer method knowing that we're going to have a big R squared and a little R squared. And they have to be computed separately, correct? Yeah, we talked about that. So we said we could do, in fact, let me just kind of do it this way. We had a big R squared and then we said we could subtract the little R. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. The little R squared, but because, oops, that's an R. Because we have this common factor of pi. Factor it out. We mm -hmm. could factor it out. And we said that we could have our pi factored out. And then what we're really doing is taking the big radius squared minus the little radius squared. Right. And the dy is your variable of integration. It can be on the outside. You actually think mm -hmm. of it as being factored out. OK. So talk to me now about filling mm -hmm. this in. I've got my pi out here. Limits yeah. of integration. Limits of integration. Zero so, four. Now you're, well, now you're going. Oh wait, both sides. So go, which way are we going? Up? Uh, are we changing along oh, the y yeah. or changing along the x? Along the y. So if we're along changing the along the y, what was our maximum y value on this? Uh, four. Two. Because if x is yeah. four, that's mm -hmm. where four we rounded. Two. The y is two. That's so right. Zero to two. Zero yes. to two. Very good. Now, what's going to be that outer function? What so is x equals four. Very good. So that four. outer curve is four. It's going to have to get squared. And then we're going to subtract what's the inner curve. The y function. Squared. The Yeah. In it's, terms of x. X is a function of y. It's a function of where you are along the y. So what is x? Of x. Plus y, y squared. 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 And that has to be squared, right? Skylar? Because what is X? It's the horizontal distance you're moving out, and it depends on where you are with the Y. So X is a function of Y. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? Okay, so do a little cleanup for me on this. I've still got my pi outside. Uh, whenever we clean up the squaring, we get what for our integrand? 16 minus 16 Y to the fourth. Yes, 16 minus Y to the fourth. And that's pretty easy to integrate. We're going to get what? Miss Bedford? Yes. Mm -hmm. On the line above where you have your big R squared, is that supposed to be a two squared or is it four squared? No. This part right here? You already squared it, right? Or No. no. Yeah. The four came from how far we had moved out from the y oh, axis. Okay. Remember, x equals four was our boundary? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does that make so sense? Yes. Okay. Got it. <clears throat> So yes, that was that, uh, if we rotated that, we just got that giant cylinder with a radius of four. Okay. Okay, so tell me what's gonna, what do we get when we integrate this? 16 becomes? 16x, or 16y. 16y minus, how do you um, integrate y to the fourth? Y to the fourth, so y to the fifth over one fifth. Y to the over fifth five. over five, mm -hmm. or one fifth y to the fifth. And then that has to get evaluated from zero to two. And I'm kind of running out of space. And I know you guys don't see real well when I write it at the bottom. So let's see. If I go woo, all the way over here, we're going to have pi. And then my, uh, using the fundamental theorem of calculus, my upper or my uh, curve That's our when upper I put limit. in two, upper limit is... Two. 16 times 2 is 32, 32, right? 
mm -hmm. minus, and then two to the fifth is? 32. 32 over five minus my lower limit, I'm putting in zero. zero. So that just becomes zero, right? You don't mm -hmm. always assume that, especially with logarithmic and exponential. Right, but this one, it, it turned out that it would just give us zero. And then what are we gonna do to clean this part up? Uh, we're uh, common denominator. Common denominator five. of five. Mm -hmm. And if I multiply five times 32, that turns into? Uh, it turns 160. 160, 160 over five. And what is 160 over five minus 32 over five? Oh, ho, ho. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Same answer. Should be, right? <laughs> This one is one of the times that you would have a choice about which method you might want to use. Either one would be mm. acceptable, but we know we can't always have the option to use both. Sometimes the disc or the washer method won't work. All right, so, so far so good? Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. All right, let's move on then. Um, this is just that same illustration and you can see those individual shells there. This one is the one we already did because that was the first one that was like mm -hmm. the dog bowl. Mm -hmm. um, this is just reminding us if we are rotating about a horizontal line, that's going to mean that we have to do what? Uh, not reciprocate, but um, do the inverse make make. Well, we'll the have to into the y's. Yeah, the boundary and the equations need to be in terms of y. Yeah. Okay. So let's look at. Let's see. Was this one? Hold on. Previous. No, that's the one we already did. Mm -hmm. There should be oh, one no, 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 no. It. It's the same one except now it's revolved now, about the x-axis. Same graph. Uh-huh. And we probably have done these with disk, but I think now we're going to do it with shells. Okay. So we so, need to draw the graph. So let's try that. So mm -hmm. when we draw the graph, we already know what this puppy looks like because we've done it a few times now. So we have zero, zero, one, one, and then if I put in four for x, square root of four is two. Okay, so this is the region that's gonna be rotated about which axis? The x-axis. Yes, the x-axis. So this is gonna come down here. Oops, hold on. Now this one would be easy with disc, would it not, guys? Yes. But we're going to see what it, how it would work with shells. You think? Mm -hmm. Okay. So talk to me then about if we're going to rotate around the x, then I'm supposed to slice which way? This is shells now. Parallel to parallel, mm -hmm. parallel so to the x. Do that, so, Mr. Bedford. Show so them. If I'm yeah. slicing parallel to the x, let me get a different color here. Yeah, watch your. It's like a cookie cutter, and you're coming at it horizontally. You're laying yourself on the x-axis, and you're cutting through the x. Okay, and so you're these, laying these slabs out. So, tell me then if, it, and maybe it's easier to think about it this way. If that's the way I'm slicing. Can you tell me, oops, hold on. Mm -hmm, right there. That's oh. it. Well, That's what they need to see. That, they need to see that right there. Okay. So you can see this is how we're slicing. So can you tell, what would be my limits of integration? Uh, it would be X. So it would just be zero to four. No, no, it's no, no. Y, right? Your Y, your radius is getting bigger along the Y, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. if I'm slicing parallel to the X, then I'm moving along the Y axis. And maybe if you look at it that way and you realize, okay, if I'm slicing that direction and if my limits of integration are going to have to be Y values, that means that I need to make sure that what I'm putting in for my equation wow. is using Y as the variable. Does that make yes. sense? 
It just mm -hmm. be wire, right? If as long as yes. it's like transposed up or down. That's right. That's okay. right. Okay. So the, excuse me, the radius is growing vertically along the Y as you cut through horizontally. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to cut through um, and end up with the Y as my radius height, what would be those limits of integration now from where uh, to where? Zero to three. Or zero to two. Zero, zero to, to two. two. Good. And we know if we're doing shells, it's two pi times whatever the radius is times whatever the height is. And then we'll have that change in y. What so did we say? Yeah, mm -hmm. excuse me, Miss Bedford. What did we say, guys? If you're cutting parallel to the x, making mm -hmm. shells, everything has to be in terms of not x, but y. 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 Okay, so I'm going to kick out the two pi, mm -hmm. going from zero to two. You guys tell me what needs to go in for that radius. What's going to be my radius change? Where you are along the x. No. Remember, if we're, if we're rotating about the x, then when I'm making these slices, my mm -hmm. radius length is changing this way, is it not? Right. What is that distance? Our, is that an X or a Y? Y. 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 Your y. y. Your Ys are getting bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what's going to be my height? Show them the height, Miss Bedford. Here's it's my height. Okay. The line segment parallel to okay. the X. So X squared. Or it would be x equals y squared. x equals y squared. Very good, Eli. Because remember, I've got to use y as my variable. So I'm going to square both of these. So you're I describing get... what x is in terms of y. Mm -hmm. OK. Is this Ms. making sense? Miss Bedford, can you draw a line segment across the shaded area parallel to the x? Uh, just a representative line segment across the shaded area hor horizontally parallel to the x like so, she did those yellow okay. marks she made yeah. there you go there okay. you go and the, isn't that a description of what x is measured from the y yes and x will be what y square always Mm -hmm. Well, that's inside the figure, and yes. I think what Miss Hyde is asking for, I, I think I understand what she's asking for now. She's saying as I'm moving across, it's actually this, isn't it, to get to the curve? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's the height, right? Yeah. Is that what yeah. you're, you're asking well, me for? Or, or, well, the actual height is the horizontal line within the shaded portion of the curve. So... Okay, That's so you're going to have to be, yes, so okay, our sorry. height is going to be not just X, is it? No. Okay, the height is that, sh is that horizontal line she just emphasized. Mm -hmm. That's parallel to the X in the shaded area. Miss Bedford, correct me if I'm wrong. But that height is going to have to be the right-hand curve, what X is at the right-hand curve minus what X is at the left-hand curve. Am I wrong on this? The Y square, instead of Y square, X will be Y square, but that's the distance you just showed, Miss Bedford, from the Y axis out to your curve. That's what X is. X equals Y square. I think that's right. I'm going to look at this. Well, I'm, I'm thinking though. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's okay. Right. Okay. Uh, guys, this is hard for us because if we were together, we could collaborate yeah. a little bit better. Uh, make a, the, sh the shell height is actually the distance you're cutting through as you cut those as you cut those shells parallel to the x it's the actual horizontal distance you're cutting through 
So measured from the y-axis, your shell height at any value along the y would be what x is at the right-hand curve, which would be x equals four, four right? Mm. Minus what x is at the lower curve. I mean, at the left-hand curve, and x at the oh. left-hand curve would be y squared. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Hyde. I do see what you're saying. Yes, now. see what I'm okay. saying? It's that horizontal line segment through the meat of that solid that represents the shell height. So hold on a second, guys. Yeah, my bad. Yes. No, this. you're no, 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 no. Well, why is that not wanting to come off? Hold on a second. But what you showed was correct. What is X at the right hand curve? X will be four. Do y'all agree, guys? Mm -hmm. What is X at the left-hand curve, which is the y square. parabola, Y square? So if you take X equals four, which is the distance from the Y axis to the right-hand curve and subtract X equals Y square, which is that distance. Okay, do X equals four, Miss Bedford, from the okay. Y axis. But in fact, Watch let your, me do this. Let me draw this again, okay? I think I've got too much going on up there and it's hard to see. Yes. All right. So we've got that there, this here, this here. Mm -hmm. Here's our curve. Mm -hmm. And because it's gonna rotate about the X and we're gonna be slicing parallel to the mm -hmm. X, here's what Miss Hyde is saying. I know that this Y, as I move across, that's gonna give me the radius of those little slices, right? What she's saying is to get the height, and I am so sorry that this just totally slipped uh, my notice before. She's saying you'd have to go all the way through to here X to get this four. distance of four, but to get the part we want, which is this part inside the figure, mm -hmm you would then have to subtract out the curve, which is going to be the y squared. Is x equals y squared the distance from the y-axis horizontally out to that curve? Mm-hmm. Y'all, they know. So, four, come on, guys. The distance from the y-axis out to the right-hand curve is always four. Right. Subtract the distance from the y-axis out to the what? curve y equals square root of x. That at curve in right terms here. of what? x, x equals y squared. squared. Mm -hmm. So if I take four and subtract y squared, wouldn't that give me that horizontal line segment parallel to the x-axis? And yes. that's your shell height. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Hyde. For so it's like the no. outer radius minus the inner radius yes. to do with the other method? The like that, right? Yes, yes. So our shell height, do a representative height that's parallel to the axis you're rotating about, and that will be your shell height. The perpendicular distance from the axis you're rotating about is your radius. So this is our radius, which is perpendicular. This is our height of the shell, which is parallel to the axis of rotation. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for straightening that out, Ms. Hyde. Oh, that, no, I didn't. No, you didn't, did. You did. No. Thank you. So you're right. We should have volume is equal to 2 pi. The limits of integration were from zero to two, and now we have y onto four minus y squared with respect to y. And at this point, we're going to have to do what? Can you uh, integrate? integrate? The fun part. Yeah, it's but what? look at your integrand. Is it oh, algebraically yes, ready? Yes, no. sure it is. Not sure for your y. Then. So we want to distribute through, we're going to get 2 pi onto the definite integral from 0 to 2 of 4y minus what? Y cubed with respect to y, right? 
Okay, now integrate that thing for me. 4y squared divided by 2, which is just 2. 2y squared, right? Yeah. Minus okay. y to the 4 divided by 4. Mm -hmm. Evaluated from 0 to 4. And oh, not 0 to 4, sorry, 0 to 2. 0 to 2. Okay. So we've got 2 pi on 2. Upper limit, plug in 2. 2 times squared is 4, so that becomes 8, eight. right? Minus, put in 2 for y. 2 to the 4th is? 16. And 16 oh. divided by 4, four. is? Four. Four. 4. 4. Minus, now what happens when I plug in 0? Just 0. Just 0. And 8 minus 4 is 4. Mm -hmm. And 2 pi times 4 is 8 pi, eight pi units, units cubed, Q. which I believe is the same thing we got when we did this doing the uh, disk method, yes. which was way easier. <laughs> yes, but, <laughs> but it is definitely doable. Yes. Okay. Did that eight weeks ago. Yes. It seems like it, doesn't it? It seems like it because we've been in this class four years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. Okay. Whew. Woo! I know this is deep, deep waters we're wading through. Too, thanks to Miss Bedford. What now? What? <clears throat> Just last week I got into calculus too. I was able to access my canvas. That is good. I, I'm so glad you're finally in and I'm sorry it took so long. <laughs> so, so let's see. I think this is the last example in the notes. Let's yeah. see if we can get through this without twisting ourselves up. Yes. The region bounded by this curve in the line x equals zero is revolved about the x-axis. We want to try to find the volume of that solid. So talk to me about how I would graph x equals 2y minus y squared. You just, like if you plug in 1 for y. Yes. Okay, X very is a function good. of y. Well, we'll do zero first. That's uh, yeah, let's do zero first. So I'm pretty sure we've got zero, zero is one of our points. Okay. Um, so you said, let's see what happens if we use one for y. Mm -hmm. What would we get, y'all? All people. Use, Come on, put in one for it. y. So two uh, times one, one minus one squared, so you get one. squared is one. Is one. Just, so I'm going to have when y is one, x is one, so one, one. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else do you want to use for y? Two. Two. Two, so if I use two, two times two minus There's two squared minus is what? Four. Zero. And what is your left-hand boundary? Did you read on? Uh, left-hand boundary is x equals zero. Oh my goodness, okay, so, so now I'm thinking we've got the curve here, don't we? Yes. Sorry, that's very sloppy. Let me try that again. Zero, zero, two, zero, two, zero, two, not two, zero. Oh, I'm zero, so sorry, Miss Hyde. You're right. Zero, two, oh. not two, zero. Why is this? Grant, what's wrong? It is not. Okay, Nothing. hold on. Wow. Okay. Nothing. Here. Elbow popper. Elbow. elbow popper, okay. Okay. I don't know what I have done with my marker, but that was not. No, that's it. Erasing. Oh, no. So let me do that again. Zero, zero, one, one, and then we had zero, two. This is our figure. And it's a curve. It is a curve. And what's it rotating about? The X axis. So it's going to actually end up down here, isn't it? Mm-hmm. When we spin this thing around. Now, Talk to me about how we should set this thing up. It's revolved about the X, so we're gonna cut parallel to the X. Could we okay. even, in terms of Y then? Could we even do a, a disk method on this? Is it possible to cut no. perpendicular no. to the X? Could you solve that equation for Y? No. Explicit, no. No, we can't. So we're going to have to use yeah, the shell true. method on this. So let's see if we can figure out what our radius is going to need to be if we're rotating about the X. Okay. 
and you're cutting horizontal parallel to the X. Parallel. Then what's going to be my radius value? Is it X or is it Y? Y. 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 Absolutely. It's and let's see if we can identify the height. Now, this one is unlike the other one because you don't have an empty space, do you? No. So would it just be our equation? I think so. Just, just be our equation, 2Y minus Y squared. So let's try this thing. We've got 2 pi. We said yeah. the radius is Y. We said the height is 2Y minus Y squared with respect to Y. Now give me my limits. This is going to be from where to where. Zero to two uh, on the zero. Y? Yes, yes. Good, it has to be the distance on the Y axis if my variables are in terms of Y, okay? Good job. Okay, I want you guys to finish this up and then we're gonna see if you all come up with the same values. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. I have a question. <laughs> I have a question. Yes, question. Um, do you always cut in the direction you're rotating? If it's a shell method, you always cut parallel to your axis of rotation. So since we're cutting, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, since we're rotating about the x-axis, that means that we're going to have to slice parallel to that. And that means our radius is changing along the y. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's the opposite when we're working with disks. Those we cut perpendicular. Okay. Great. So let's try this. When you guys think you have an answer, let's send it in a, in a chat. I want to see what you guys come up with. And I'm going to assume it's still going to have a pi in it. So you can just put PI for pi along with whatever number part of your value you get. Did you say you don't know how to do this? Or? No, the uh, the chat part. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got it. I got it. <laughs> yeah, the chat part should be along the bottom bar somewhere. I see the acid units. I'll just put three. <laughs> <coughs> okay, Holy. so I've got an answer from Eli. Hopefully that's right. So now Emily's responded, and I'm betting most everybody is getting close to uh, having this solved. Emily said same. Same. <laughs> oh, well, that, that was me that was saying it. Did you get it? Yeah, I got the Yeah, same. we both got it, so. Okay. So... <laughs> What did y'all We all know Jacob's cheating off of Emily. Jacob, what oh, yeah, did you get? <laughs> <laughs> Jacob, what did you get? Uh, eight thirds pi. Eight so what? what? Uh, eight thirds pi. 
Very good. So far, that's what everybody has, has put in. So you knew you needed like to distribute huh. first, right? And you got 2y squared minus y cubed. Yes. Correct. And then when you integrated you that, two, it turned into what? 2y two two cubed over 3. three minus mm -hmm. y fourth divided by 4. And then when you evaluated from 0 to 2, you guys were coming up with 8 thirds pi after you used the fundamental theorem of calculus. So are we good with that? Yes. It's, yeah. Good job, y'all. Good job. Okay. 8 thirds pi units cubed. So um, let me ask you real quickly if we were to look at this and I know this thing that my numbers are a little bit different on here because when I printed it out it changed the numbers on me but we're looking at I just kind of want to mention to you what you see has anybody started on this yet which page no. is that six two it's six one it's a printout that says six one and six two it's just some extra practice problems yo I gave y'all that the uh the it says like yeah i found it i found it yeah your numbers are going to be a little different than what you see on my screen oh, yeah, but the is. problem types will still be the same so if we were to look at this i just want to point out if it doesn't say you have to use the shell method you don't have to use the shell method if you decided you wanted to that's fine uh, but most of the time, if we can do a disc or a washer, we usually think that's easier. So you're going to have to see what it looks like when you get these on the graph. Um, but notice number six does say you have to use the shell method. Okay. And number seven says you have to use the shell method. The others it's your choice depending on what the figure is so do we want to do any of these as, as practice or what do you yes, guys think do. is there anything about this that's scary you want to do a shell yes okay okay so if we were to do one of these let me see if I can um, do we want to do the one where the figures already here or do y'all want to pick a different one? Oh, hey, I found the thing. Which one are you talking about, Miss Bedford? Um, Actually, I'm looking at number six. Okay. Let's look at number six because notice this thing is rotated about the x axis, right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let me double check on, because I think I've got. Is the only thing that's different on yours, this is x equals 2y squared? No, the equation is square root of 5. Oh, yours is square root of 5? Yes. Oh, okay. Number 6? Mm -hmm. So that's a square root of 5. And on um, 5, the, the... This is 10, the e, right? The uh, mm. second e equation is x y equals 2x plus 12. Okay. Okay. Which is probably why my answer came out kind of wild. No. Simple. I think I think uh, I we just probably changed the constant, Miss Bedford, in different years. Okay. So you guys tell me then. So when I'm looking at, I I changed to the numbers I had on mine. You have different numbers on yours. On oh, number six, y'all look and see what you have. That's exactly what I have on six. Yeah. That's okay, so we've got square root of 5, mm -hmm. and the function is x equals 2y squared, and then we have uh, 0 to 10 on the x-axis. So we're going to make that adjustment and use the shell method to see what we get when we revolve this about the x-axis. So talk to me then about we've got to figure out what's going to be r and what's going to be our shell height. Please look at your figure and look at that pink line. I believe that's pink. Is mm -hmm. that a representative height? If we're cutting parallel to the X. Yes. And X is already defined to be 2Y squared. There is no hole in the middle. Correct? Mm -hmm. So the distance from the Y axis out to your curve is always going to be 2 times y, y squared. Y is squared. Mm -hmm. 
okay. and your radius would be perpendicular to that as measured from the x. So your radius would to five. Be, well, your radius would have to be whatever y is, depending on where the cut is as you cut parallel to the x. Okay. Miss Bedford, go up from the x perpendicular to that pink line. Okay. See what I'm talking about? Yeah, watch her. That's going to be your radius, depending okay. on where your shell height is. So it's that curve? Well, your shell height is your curve. Okay. And your radius is where you are along the Y. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, our radius is just, I, I know it's kind of confusing because look at it, it in a sense, this is where we're cutting off that little rectangle. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to help you see is this part of the rectangle is how far I've moved along the Y. This part of the rectangle is actually the height along the curve. Okay. Okay. And I know depending, I mean, when you're looking at it, you could say, well, that's a cross I'm, section. That's a cross section. Yes. Okay, so let's see now if you can tell me what would you put in for R? What would R be, guys? And you're rotating about the X. I'm rotating y. about the X. My R has to be what? Y. Y. Absolutely. And what would have to be my height? 2Y squared. Say yes, it again. 2Y two, two two squared. squared. Absolutely. Very good. Okay, so if we were going to set this up, what would be my limits of integration from zero to square root of five? Yes, zero to square root of five, two pi, because that's what your y is growing along. Mm -hmm. And my radius is y, and my height is two y squared, right? Mm -hmm. And then the square root of five part is probably what's going to make it a little okay. bit messy, but the algebra won't be that bad on getting it ready to integrate because we're going to do what before we integrate? Do you want to kick anything out? The 2 pi. pi. 2 pi. And then how do we clean up that integrand? Distribute your y. Well, not exactly distribute, but multiply y times 2y squared and get 2 y cubed. Y cubed. Good. Okay, so now integrate that. 2y to the third over three, or 2y to the fourth over four, and then you Yes, can... and that 2y to the fourth over <laughs> four is gonna clean up to be y to the fourth over two, right? Yeah. And we've gotta evaluate that from zero to the square root of five. And y'all can do that. Takes two square roots of five to give rational five. So, Square root of five raised to the fourth power is going to be what? Uh, two five, so twenty-five over two. Very good. So Wait. that's going to turn into twenty-five. Square root could of five you, four times. Uh huh. Could you take one half out? I took when I did it. I took one half out as a scalar and canceled yeah. out the two. Absolutely, you could do that. Can. That's a great idea. Blackboard. So if we were to do that. Then let's, let me just come this. As long as the lower limit is zero. Is the lower limit zero? Yes. Yes. So if I were to, to no. pull out this two and cancel it there, I'd have oh, yeah. pi on two. And my y to the fourth, we said, was 25. Mm -hmm. Minus my y to the fourth, when I put in zero, is just zero. So are you guys getting 25 pi units yeah. cubed? Good job. Excellent job. Okay. All right. So do we feel equipped now to finish up 6-1 and 6-2? Yes. Yes. How, where do you want us to submit that? Like, how do you want us to do that? That one you'll submit the same way as you did 6-1. So let me take you guys back to, hold on a second. Um... Oh. I, was, I was having issues like 
consolidating my documents. Like I got all my work scanned, but it was like separate emails or whatever. So I don't, I don't know. I'm going to try and make them one. I do you have an yeah. assignment on uh, Canvas for us to determine the uh, 6162. That one I have probably not put into Canvas yet, so I will need to set that one up. Can y'all see my Canvas page now? Yes. Okay, so when you go into assignments, you're going to go to 6-1 to submit that one. 6-2, you'll submit here, and I have to see, I can't remember if I've set that one up yet. Uh, Well, sorry, I'd have to put it in student view for you to see. Yeah, it's submitting a file upload. So you're going to upload it there. And what I will do is put in a 6162 review sheet mm -hmm. that you will submit in there. And then for that quiz that we have, which is usually over 616263, um, that's going to be coming up next week. I've got to change the date on that. And then we'll end up, um, like I said, I'll send part of it as something you will do. And I'm, I may actually put the questions in Canvas with a window of time that, you know, you've got a certain amount of time to get it done and you'll be able to open it up, get the homework done, and then upload those problems to me and then like I said we'll probably do one together in the zoom meeting okay mm -hmm. all right anything else hey Kelsey you got your camera working awesome so all right anything else we need to talk about before we go we're gonna do six three Wednesday six three on Wednesday okay, okay. and that's probably the last to me, that's the last one that's that's a little bit involved. After mm -hmm. that, six five work uh, is not hard. It's a shame we can't all be together because Miss Hyde always has some really interesting visuals on my work bucket. That, and my that's rock right, pulling something up. On my you'll, you'll have to see if you can uh, get your bucket ready to go, and we maybe mm -hmm. we can still do it on the uh, on Zoom. Um, and pushing your box, you always push mm -hmm. your box too, but. Um, I, and just FYI, Ms. Hyde, I'm thinking if we do 9-1 and 9-2, um, that's plenty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. on sequence and series. So, okay, guys. Um, I will see you Wednesday. <laughs> Y'all let us know if you need anything. Okay. Work okay? hard, guys. Okay. All right, Hang bye -bye. in there. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.